um, something I associate quite heavy, heavily with what I think a man or what a father should do. My mum taught me that. Um, if my mum, you know, was on her last hundred pounds, somehow we are all going to still eat that week mm. and somehow bills are going to get paid. And even if they're not getting paid, she's not burdened us with that. She will find a way. She will make it happen. In it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Goodman Factory episode. Thank you for tuning in. Today we have, uh, well, we have a special guest today. We have Goodman Sampson here. Uh, some of you may recognize him actually from the wonderful content that's come out recently uh, for Father's Day. So Samson was one of the one of the handsome fellas that was on there representing the fathers out there with his daughter. And then we also have Goodman Brian who also featured on our Goodman content recently uh, for, for the fathers. So thank you gents for coming. Thank um, you. How have you guys been? Yeah, good. all good. All good. good man. Yeah, that's what guys saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm alright, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> typical, isn't it? Typical man. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Deep, 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 deep down inside, you're burning. Um, how was your Father's Day, man? Yeah, mine was alright. You know, I slept. I woke up late. And I slept in the afternoon. Like yeah. a true, like a true dad. <laughs> it's a good, good Sunday. <laughs> like, a, like a true dad. What about you, Sam? You yeah, anything? mine was, yeah, pretty quiet. To be fair, um, it was my daughter's birthday day before that, so yeah, I was happy to lay in and then went to family as well on top of it so decent yeah good timing good timing good timing um what i will say actually is because these guys are being so modest go into the good man factory youtube channel and also on the instagram page and look at the content it's got amazing feedback um ridiculous amount of views and just in a very short space of time so so go and check that out so i guess kind of on that topic um of father's day um one of the things we're going to talk about today is is fatherhood and I think on an episode before we discussed, I won't say briefly, we probably discussed discussed it in kind of a lot of detail, but we, we spoke about parenting generally. And I think what would be quite important to, to discuss, and I think what some of our followers may benefit from, is hearing um, our opinions on what we think a good father is. So the first question I'm going to put out to you guys is, <coughs> what do you think a good father looks like or... What are the traits of a good father, in your opinion? Man, that's tough. Yeah. That's a tough question, yeah. you know. I don't come easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll say it's really subjective and it um what a good father looks like is dependent on, you know, the lens of the, the dad, I guess. Um a dad could deem themselves to be successful or a good dad if their child reaches certain milestones that that ticks their boxes and another dad will have um different set of criteria. Um for me personally I would say if I can achieve um a, a point where my I know my child's been raised and they're happy and that they they can walk the path that they want to walk and they're happy in that path, I feel like I've done a good job. Mm. Okay. So so what I'm getting from that was basically if your child was happy, yeah. Which is quite a broad term. Mm-hmm successful <laughs> which is also a very broad term <laughs> you're gonna make me break it down like <laughs> <you>. <laughs> then you then you've done a good job right yeah yeah okay. um so for example um i have my i have i have like an ideology of what i think i would like so if my child was uh i don't know actually i'm quite bad at so i don't really have an idea um a successful sports star or musician for example I'll be like, yeah, but then that might not be what my child wants. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if I can facilitate um, my daughter to get in a position where she's like, you know what, I want to do this, and I'm whether I, whether I understand it, but aid her along that journey and help develop her into that career that she wants to get into or that walk of life, then I can say, yeah, I've done my bit. If you know what I'm saying like, mm -hmm. so it's more like I'm providing guard roles and support rather than directing her into into a, um, a role or position that she might not want okay we're going to speak kind of on that mm -hmm. i'm just so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reword the question and i'm going to ask what are the traits okay. of a good father because you've just described one of them in your example and what you said basically is uh i'm going to support yeah my daughter so 
you clearly feel like being a support system for your child or for your children is a trait. Like if you you have to be able to support them. Yeah. However, that might might look like. So, what are the traits that you would say um, make up a good father, in your opinion? So, first of all, that would be you would need to understand and listen. Like, listen, take feedback from what your child requires and needs, and not necessarily giving them rules and pushing them into what they might not want. So, just literally sitting there and listening, listening to your child, and making sure that you are a a voice of reason to your child and always you're always available to um sit down and understand what they want to say whatever it's whatever it is they want to say whether that might be something so mundane that you don't give a monkey's about but just being interested and in being present i think that's that's traits that a good dad would have to have okay so it sounds like support and also being a good listener yeah like that. quite important yeah. to just, you just coming off what you're saying paying attention exactly. like paying a lot or as much attention as you can because sometimes you could be a dad you could work loads and, but you don't know who your kids are you're like oh, I'm working for my kids okay that's cool but do you know who they are exactly yeah what they're good at what they're not good at what they don't like who their friends are what food they like I'm not saying like, oh you have to know your son's favourite colour is blue you know but maybe if he wants you to you should know but you should pay attention because kids want attention that's that's all they, that's their currency and that's all they want they're crying they want your attention they want to show you what car toy car they have they want oh my son just runs up to me it's like daddy who's be watching on his ipad daddy oh yeah he went in the spaceship and then he did this and i'm like yeah <laughs> it means mm. nothing to me but like he found it mad funny but imagine if i just ignored him he'd be mm. like oh my dad didn't don't even meanwhile i'm working on my computer and he just runs something wasting my time and you know that, that that old meme that they have oh your kid just turns like, look 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 and they just jump and spin but that's that's their currency they just want attention so i think being a good dad is literally paying as much attention as you possibly can to figure out, okay, this is my child. So even if you do want them to do something or you're trying to figure out what you should, what they're good at, where you should lead them, right? Paying attention will help you with that because, yeah. oh, he's good at this. Like my son likes cars and there's a million things you could do with cars now, but he might not like cars when he's seven. He might like something else, right? He might want to do something else. But if I'm not paying attention, I won't know that and I won't be able to lead him or help him get to the, down the path that he wants to. So I think paying attention because again, again, your dad could be in the house or your dad could be there working. You could be, you could be a family unit, mm. but your dad don't pay attention to you. Mm. And it's just still neglect whether he's in the house or not in the house or not a family unit or maybe he was never there, but attention, yeah, just speak for me, man. You know what? Um, if we look back here as like an older generation, obviously they had different set of challenges to what we have. We're, we're a lot more fortunate. Yeah, but, what you tend to hear if you speak amongst my peers and friends is that, yeah, their dads, even um, two household situations where they both their parents mm. were there, their dad tended to provide the uh, the fundamentals in terms of, you know, putting clothes in their back and mm. food on the table and so forth, so forth. But in terms of actually being present and actually taking the active interest, it's all quite surface level, but they didn't quite really understand what it was their child needed, mm. which, okay, understandably you're doing the fundamentals and you know th you're grateful for that but it's a bit more than that isn't it? yeah <laughs> the bit that's actually free it doesn't cost nothing yeah it's just yeah, yeah. just being mm. present and really you know paying attention to details to understand what they like and what they don't like and why they like it and why yeah. they don't like it it's and, that, free, and what bro. you tend to ha what tends to happen later it's on is cool. that as the child then gets older there's a bit more of a disconnect because mm. now you don't know me you've grown up not really you know mm. understanding why your dad potentially might you know um think the way he thinks towards you and mm. behaves the way he behaves towards you and now your dad is now looking at your son like whoa you're really different and mm. I'm trying to rein you in but reining you in is actually just who you are meant to be mm. and mm. you know that causes probably more of a disconnect as they grow up and then later on most again like look talking to my peers you tend to hear stuff like I actually understand why my dad was like that now mm. and um, that comes from you know probably betraying themselves and getting on like Mm. Yeah. yeah, I like what I like what you both said, but particularly what you said just now, which is what Samson was summarizing, is that um, paying attention is funny, isn't it? Because like we're in a climate now where like money means so much, mm. and we work hard to accumulate um, as much money as we possibly can for different reasons, and we probably kind of share the same rhetoric. We're doing this for our family, mm. you know. 
rappers always say they're doing it for their mum. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, but you've always got those kind of like rhetorics that we spew quite quite regularly. And the funny thing is, re- accepting that they had different challenges, but uh, parents work extremely hard. And mm. the one thing that they don't do, which is completely free, is to give mm. attention. Mm. Like, yeah. Um, and I think that that is potentially so damaging because, like you said, for any child, mm. I don't want you to buy me uh, that brand new uh, Nike Jordan trainers. I've got a funny story about that. That that costs two hundred and fifty pound yeah. because yeah. when I go to school, I'm going to scuff them up same way I and would with livid. the Reebok ones. You're going to be livid, but they're just trainers to yeah. me, you know. And you, you're probably a teenager before you actually really start caring about like oh, brands, brands yeah. and stuff like that. Maybe so really you know, knowing what so, that is, yeah. Right? So like, if if for instance, I really want to go to a football match on a Saturday, for instance, and uh, I don't know, you kind of compare it to the fact that actually that's not that important. Look at all the stuff that I've done for you mm. when you wanted to go to these games or when you wanted to do that. Like, look at what I've done for mm. you, and I'm looking at it like, yeah, but I didn't care about that. Mm. Like, you never asked me, do I want this Louis Vuitton bag? Mm. Yeah. My, my dad never bought me a Louis Vuitton bag, by the way. That, but, that, <laughs> but, you know, like, you never asked me if you yeah. wanted this tracksuit or whatever. Like, you just got it for me or you just bought me those presents. Yeah. Like, But the things I really cared about, you didn't kind of show an interest yeah. in, you know. And, and like you were saying, those conversations happen, unfortunately, when you get older and you're kind of, like, old, old enough and maybe more emotionally resilient enough to kind of have those difficult conversations to be like, when I needed you to kind of be there f- for me in this particular for this particular event or when i had a football match mm. or when it was my 10th birthday like you not showing up or you not kind of acting like you cared about that that to me was more detrimental yeah than anything mm. else but you know the crazy bit is going back to your question you asked what does um a good dad look like mm. they thought they was taking their boxes mm-hmm. mm. one one thing about parents as well when, when, or when you were, when you grow up and you become a parent you kind of forget when you were a child and what you wanted when you were a child so you start adding your own mm. oh i'm good I'm, I, I think i should do this and this and what you think is good parenting versus ch- and children are very intelligent they'll tell you you know they, they or if you just kind of watch them you can kind of see what what they need or what they want mm. do you know what i mean and for the most again the currency is attention right <laughs> like like if my son's quiet, or he just wants to just pick him up, or just play with him, or tickle him, or something, right? And it just makes him feel better. Yeah. That's the currency. Whereas if you know, if you're an adult and you're crying, you probably lost your job. Okay, you need some money, right? That's your currency, right? Mm. Or you, do you know what I mean? Or or it could be attention as well. But yeah, you tend to kind of make these things up versus like, okay, when I was a child, what did I? How was I? You f- you forget because it just seems such a distant thing. Like, oh, I'm an adult now. I'm doing the right thing. These are the things that, as an adult, I've learned to do. And yes, if I do these, then my child is okay. And it's like, sometimes it's not mm. even true. Like even the funny uh, you're saying about the um, the clothes. I was I was taking my son to nursery one time, and um, there's a one of the nursery workers. She works there. She she brings her grandson to the nursery. This guy was wearing a north. He's like three years old. He's wearing a North Face jacket and Jordan ones. And he looked cool, of course. And then there's some nice jeans, right? I'm like, okay, to nursery though. That's a bit mad. Yeah. Maybe a birthday party could wear that. My son was wearing some Marvel trainers <laughs> with, with, with Marvel heroes on it. Next day when I when I went um, in the morning, she's like, you're costing me money, you know? And I'm like, oh, why, what's happening? She's like, yeah, my, my grandson said he wants the Marvel trainers. <laughs> so now I've got to go run up as them buy the Marvel trainers. And exactly what you were saying, like, you're not buying those clothes necessarily for the kids. I mean, you're buying it because you know it's you know North Face is cool, isn't it? I don't get yeah, nothing wrong with putting yeah. your son in North Face or, or Jordan good brand, good he looked, quality. Yeah, he yeah. looked cool. Do you know what I mean? But maybe not the nursery. <laughs> you know, yeah. He's going to scuff it up. They're going to drop in the yeah. sandbox. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, birthday party, yeah, cool. And I was just laughing. I was like, yeah, man, just buy the Marvel, in it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the Marvel is, that's, that's what they think is cool because they know Marvel, innit? They watch Marvel movies and cartoons and all this kind of stuff. And mm. and again, it's the parents thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to put what I, what I know to be cool on my, on my kid mm. when the kid thinks... Marvel is cool or, or Disney is cool. Like now, my son thinks Marvel is cool. He don't want to wear the uh, the Mickey Mouse jean jacket that he got mm. him. He's like, is that the Mickey Mouse one? I don't want to wear that because you don't think that's cool. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But imagine if I'm forcing Dolce and Cabana on him because I know that's cool. That, well, that's cool to people my age. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like again, you pay attention to what your kids actually like versus what you think will be about you. good for them. And this is not to say that you leave them to lead themselves. Because no, no, you can't. They yeah, can't, you can't raise themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can't raise themselves. But you, obviously, you keep them with it. Do you know what I mean? And 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 lead them based on kind of what they like. But as well as knowing the best way to kind of keep them contained and say no, okay, do that, but don't do this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Going back to what you said, though, I think everything is relevant because it made me think that like when like 
when my dad was out there working night shifts, day shifts, doing whatever it was he had to do to to bring money home um to him he probably thought he was ticking all the boxes in mm. fact i know he he I know he thinks he was ticking all the boxes because we've had conversations from when I was a teenager up until now where you can tell in the discussion he doesn't understand how he may have possibly failed in particular areas. Mm. Yeah. He doesn't see the significance of maybe something that I've said is really important. And he's like, what were you talking about? Like, I bought you did like every mm. Christmas, you know, like when I was, and, and it goes back to kind of what he thinks is right. And, and he's not wrong in in some ways it's not wrong because i imagine for him and this is why it's good to kind of have a mindset that is not even just not even forgiven but a mindset that's kind of appreciative of everyone's story in some way and my dad's never really been forthcoming about his history his background where he's come from he's always kind of really i don't know if he's tried to shelter us from that but i think it, it was pr probably very traumatic for him so the way he dealt with it was to just shut off from it and so we don't have much knowledge about his history mm. his background his parents never met my grandparents none of that yeah. stuff but what i do know is that my dad come from a very 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 poor background um and he never went through formal education i think maybe after the age of like nine ten i think he came i think his his, his dad was like a farmer or something you know so he was just kind of mm. in the farm trying to make ends meet it wasn't possible so at the age of like 12 13 he's out there on the streets trying to make it happen he came to england at a very young age, the only one of his siblings, the only one of his family, in his family, and he just had to make it happen here. And so I think for him, because he came from that particular background, his only focus is how do I ensure that my children don't suffer? Mm. And most people, you know, associate suffering with poverty mm -hmm. and not having uh, money. And I think for, for my dad, he was then ultimately driven. And that that informed the amount of hours he worked, what he did in particular, how he got it, whether it was good or bad, whatever. That that's what he was driven by, and so for him, that is success. Yeah. Mm. Because we won't live the way he did in Nigeria for different reasons, but partly also because he's prepared to not allow that to happen to his children. Um, but unfortunately, as we are going to do, he did fail in certain areas, um, and it was the emotional side. Um, it was present. My dad's been in my life all my life. Um, and that's a privilege in itself. Um, I know some people don't don't have that. But then my dad was present but wasn't present, if that makes sense. Um, we didn't have an emotional mm. uh, tie or relationship in, in in that sense. And and so I guess going back to the original question, which is what are the traits of a good father? Um, I think one, I think one is being kind. Mm. I think you are the first example of kindness to your children. You show it to them when they're babies. You love mm. them to death. Mm. Um, and I guess as they get older, that kind of dwindles a little bit. And there's an intersect between being a father and being a father of a son. I mm. think you're more dangerous when you're a father of a son because you're more likely, I think, to continue the cycle of, uh, I guess you could say toxic masculinity, but negative traits and negative ideas surrounding men um whereas i think when you're a father of a daughter of, of a girl for me anyway personally it changed my view on how i needed to be and being kind was like default because just generally speaking you put your, you put your son and your girl together you hear it all the time mm. dj envy is the best at this oh my gosh that guy is so toxic with his son <laughs> you need to go <laughs> if you haven't listened to dj envy's <laughs> podcast with his wife go listen to it it is comedy gold but he is so toxic, as in, like, he would, on, live on the podcast, he would tell you about how he's, like, beating up his son or all this stuff. And yeah. I know for a fact he don't treat his daughter like that. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that's just, like, an exaggerated yeah. version. But it's true, though. We yeah. we treat our sons kind of almost like... It's got to be tough. Be tough. It's Get on with it kind of thing. Like, what do you want me to be kind for? Like, world ain't going to be kind to you. It's a funny story, yeah. So but then when it's your daughter, you... Got to nurture them. Cuddle her, you, you kiss her up. You guys got daughters, right? You protect yeah. her, yeah. So we got daughters, yeah. Got son. So eighty percent of the time, I probably say ninety percent of the time, I apologize to him if I if I if I've like oh, hit his head or something mm. by accident, but like I'm walking or we're we're running and you might bump into the door, whatever I do, I'll, I'll say sorry for it, right? I'm not one of these parents that just say ten percent of the time, one out of ten times, I won't say sorry, but <laughs> intentionally, I'll still kiss him, hug him, but I won't say sorry. Mm. And he'll cry, mommy, daddy didn't say sorry to him. And I'm looking at my missus like, I'm not saying sorry. And I told her, 
I'm not going to say sorry every single time. Most of the time I will. Because you'll go out into the world and people will do stuff to you and they will not <laughs> care and they will not tell you sorry. Mm. Now, I know it sounds mad. <laughs> They're going to clip that one. <laughs> but we're going to come to that. <laughs> you, you don't want to go around because people will offend you or people mm. will treat you some kind of way and they will not say sorry to you. They will not care. They will, that's, that's the world. You're not going to go into the world and expect people to always... And, and, and that's the thing. Being offended is relative. So you can say something to me right now and I could be offended. But you might have not thought what you said was offensive. So why? So you wouldn't be like, I'm not going to say sorry. Though. I'm just telling you the truth. Mm. So then, but if I'm expecting you to say sorry, then we have to fight now or something. <laughs> like, do, mm. do you get what I mean? And it's like, no, don't go around expecting people to say sorry because people are not going to care about you. So yeah, he's three years old. But again, being tough because <laughs> he's a boy just extra tough but if, if that was my daughter now i'll be like oh sorry babe what's oh god i can't believe you i'm sorry okay come on this is my son like nah hey listen bro you're gonna go into the world you might have to fight <laughs> no one's gonna say sorry to you I'm glad no you one's know. gonna care yeah. this that and exactly i would never i don't have a daughter yet but i'll never do it <laughs> but so now so, yeah. but, so now that you said that, and that's just that just makes sense yeah. to me though so now that you said <laughs> now that you said that yeah. you know what you do with your son and you do it because you don't have a daughter <laughs> yeah. and because you believe and you've been led to believe that that's 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 the right that's thing toughing to him do. up so that's, that's the right yeah. thing to do even though there's no evidence yeah. to show that that's actually going to have the, no, but we the don't effect know. or the yeah. outcome yeah. that you want it to be but you also just said but if it's my daughter i wouldn't so so the question i'm going to ask you ask you then <laughs> is the formulas are, too, are very different yeah should it be different for a boy and a girl well yeah because they're gonna have different experiences in life how do you know well you we don't i mean i don't you expect them to have different experiences in life because because we did is it because, because we're projecting our experience and that's part of what we do yeah. which is what we're going to do that well for again but that's what i said that, earlier yeah. you're projecting your, your own experience yeah. isn't it what and you your think identity. is best yeah, yeah yeah like so so that's what i was wondering because yeah, you that's said what, but that's why i said 90% of the time like okay. it's not like oh, i'm not saying sorry to this guy no 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 mm. most of the I, like, I guarantee you most of the time i'm saying oh sorry but like, what we do giving him a kiss saying, sorry i but would assume be 100%. I, would, uh, I would assume but for the most part i'm like i would, uh, but when when i'm not saying sorry this is not me like no, didn't I? I'll still give him a hug and a kiss. I just won't say sorry. But that lesson, though, would it not still apply with your daughter? It's not. That's not gender. It's. it's that's. Gender. It might. That's gender fluid. <laughs> as in that. Okay, like, but you feel like girls are more a bit more precious in the sense so that. They you're don't have so you're so you're proving my there. point that with kindness we. It's, it is like currency, isn't it? It's just like yeah. listen. I'm going to give you all of this, but you, I'm going to give you ninety percent, and we don't have a justification for why we do that with no, boys. But it's it. Of, Obviously, there's not no scientific proof or nothing. It's just, again, my own experience of going through the world. And a certain man might owe me an apology. Or or, or I think they do. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or or that time when this person did this and it's like, what the hell? And they don't give a damn. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, again, it's like showing you, like, the reality that you will go out into this world and you will not it, what you expect it to be you will, you're going to get your heart broken <laughs> we all did you know from yeah. our own parents from our friends girlfriends boyfriends whoever right you'll get your heart broken based on what you think oh airy fairy and it's not mm. it won't be it's true your daughter and i think if, if your parents can maybe give you some kind of reality instead of just kind of incubating you way too much and you've seen it before. You've seen those kids that, I'm not saying give your kid trauma. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you've seen those kids that have just been incubated way too much and they got into the world and you're like, yeah, oh, you, you don't know any, you, you're not, you're not street smart. You're not, you're yeah. not, you don't really know what's going on out here. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. my friend, I was talking to Malik about it. My friend sent me a clip of uh, Will Smith and Kevin Hart on the Red Table Talk. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't caught the whole thing yet, but I caught the clip. And uh, Kevin Hart was saying how, his kids are too soft be- and like his daughter because all she knows is happiness. She's never been sad. <laughs> she always gets what she wants. She she don't she don't know sad because that she don't complain. Do- yeah, because he because wait, 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 not, no, not that she, let, not, let, let him finish. Yeah, not that she then. don't know sad, but in the sense that um she's it, she don't know a guy she's never encountered a guy that maybe just wants her for one thing, um, or she's never encountered a guy that maybe don't like her or is gonna break her heart. Now obviously these are lessons that you, you will have to encounter in life. You're not just gonna, oh I'm happy and then go meet a guy. That could happen, I'm not saying, but for the most part you're not gonna 
you meet the first person you like and then they're gonna like you and then blah 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 you're not gonna go to school not get teased etc and he was saying how he woke he's like his son was just mad soft like you know he woke he, he said oh we're gonna go training 5 6 a.m in the morning and his son was acting bad like oh, i can beat you up i'm a bit strong now i can punch you and he was laughing it sounds like you've never been punched in the face like and mm. he just gave him a quick one too and the son was like oh! <laughs> and he was like he's yeah like, you're gonna guy, go boxing <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah you're gonna go box it innit and you know the Tyson quote everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face yeah. I've been punched in the face before I've been punched in the stomach I know what that feels like I know how, how I reacted I know how I wanted to react I know how I should have reacted or how now maybe I thought I was gonna react until you've actually like encountered situations in life you're mm. still you're delusional about how you would have acted mm. right and I think yeah. you could grow up very if you're incubated way too much like you've got mad pillows around you you don't know how you're going to react to the world like realistically do you know what i mean i'm not, I'm not saying again you should have trauma and <laughs> your, your dad should hang you out the window and all this kind mm. of stuff right no but there's balance you know it can be all the way over here all the way over here but i think mm. it's that analogy of like you know if you haven't been well when you're scolded by hot water or touching fire or touching something you shouldn't mm. do as a child you Generally, learn to not go and do that again, innit? But wouldn't you say that you'd prefer your child to not go through some of these instances? Like, there's so many. Ex- like you know, we talk about street yeah. smarts and stuff. I can't lie to you. I don't want my child to go through any of that. I don't. I'd rather mm-hmm. they're not street smart because in an area that they don't need to be. Mm. <laughs> you mm. know what I'm saying? I'd rather that they're in a safer environment. They don't have to to start like to a degree. We all suffer from a level of paranoia when you mm. walk down mm-hmm. certain areas, mm-hmm. and you know, you just you see a group of people. You're even us that we talk about mm. and we say the news ex- um, overdoes it and over exit makes it seem like mm. it's you know gangland or whatever, mm. whatever we still walk down the road and still look around like okay there's a certain man there mm. and mm. The, you're completely looking at your environment completely different to your white counterpart mm. who has a different um, view on life and you're looking at him like why are you not you know a bit as paranoid as I am but why should he be mm. I, I, I absolutely love this conversation because we, 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 we segued into this probably earlier than I thought we would, <laughs> but I'm glad that we did because I think this is one of the, the, the questions that I will, or this, this is one of the things that I will struggle with, I think, as a father, like me being honest, in finding that balance between um, sheltering and protecting my child and providing them. And I'm already in a better place than my parents mm-hmm. were to provide for my child financially, even mm-hmm. emotionally. Um and we're all kind of we all have a kind of similar story in that we kind of grew up in a particular part of london probably a very poor borough um seen a lot of crime seen friends go through situations and like you said our own personal experiences have created a lot of trauma within us and sometimes i think to myself i don't want my child to be naive Mm. yeah or to be uh unaware you wouldn't need to be streetwise if you ain't raised in the streets Mm. uh if you're living in, I don't know, if you're living in like Wanstead, for instance, or living in Kensington, a very nice part of London, generally speaking, mm. the need for you to be streetwise, whether you're black or white, it's, it's, it's not as it's not as not as important. Whereas if your child, if if you're if you're raising your child in in, in East Ham, let's say, or in Tottenham or in Plasto, um, I Plaster, think yeah. I think it would yeah, be <laughs> a disservice for me to tell my son and my daughter. So listen. Could you just run to the shop for me at ten forty five tonight? Uh <laughs> and just put put, put your 10, hood on, on the way there. Forty five. And uh, you know, just just run like a madman to the <laughs> shop. Even if you like you, oh, you would you would just prep them, you know. And for me the best example is my younger brother. I had mad experiences growing up, um, between the age of eleven to sixteen, and I, I anticipated that my brother would get into the same and he didn't. My brother was mm. blessed throughout the whole of school. And then one time my dad, my, my brother came and said to me, oh, so-and-so tried to rob him and his boys one time in Forest Gate. And I was like, what? I was like, what did you do? Whatever. And I think he, he was able to defend himself in that situation, but it made me realise that, like, in some ways he had been quite sheltered up until that point. Not, not even his fault. Like, I hadn't really prepped him for anything. My dad hadn't prepped him for anything. But that one incident there made me think, whoa like mm. that's that's dangerous grounds like i might have wanted to have kind of stepped in from early and say listen this is what you need to do this mm. is what you need to do and i guess kind of if you relate it to our daughters for instance i it, it's not possible for me to not prep my daughter on mm. the predatory behavior of men mm. um mm. same way when we're thinking about our sons 
if I'm not raising you in ends, you don't really need to be streetwise. But I kind of also don't need you to think that it's all right for you to behave in a certain yeah, way in certain areas. Like if you're going mm. abroad, I need you to to have your wits about you. Like yeah, I need know. you to know. And that's things that I feel like we just have. That's street, like, but street we've only had it one. because we've had those experiences. Yeah. Yeah. But don't you think that you can you can impart that your experiences on your child without having them having to go through it? Like as in, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm my whole mo is that I'm planning to communicate with my child i want my child to understand my experiences understand how we've arrived at the position we are right now and why you don't have to go through that but understand this is still the world you live in so without physically going through the exam of you know testing um yeah i'm road. not gonna make them walk through east time yeah. and do a baptism of fire <laughs> yeah, but just understand, <laughs> as an you know i'm saying just understand this is what actually still happens and this, is what, <laughs> this is where this is experiences your dad walked through because mm. early not, not it's funny talking about um um good fathers and stuff a lot of the Things that my dad, what I used to think was quite harsh. Later on in life, we had a sit down conversation randomly, and probably when I'm, I, my missus was pregnant, so he started talking to me a lot about like fatherhood and experiences yeah. and stuff like that. I realized it was slightly due to his own insecurities because he yeah. said to me, he used to see a lot of me in him. Mm-hmm. And from what I understand, he had a bit of a, he was a bit naughty, to be honest with you. So mm. he used to see me in him and think, whoa. This, wrong. this is me again mm. and I know he knows where he got up to mm. and where he got to from his behaviours and thought I don't want you to go for the same path so me as a young boy thinking this guy's mad <laughs> I couldn't understand like, it yeah. he just moves nuts to me like I've got a younger brother but my younger brother don't get the same like yeah. stress <laughs> my <laughs> sister has complete free will yeah. but with me you would think that fam I'll come like some black stain or something yeah. like, do you know what I mean but he's literally done that purely because he's scared of you know, me walking the same t- um, steps. But if he had explained to me, oh, this is what I went through, da, 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 I would understand and think, I can say, dad, you're being irrational. Like, I, I'm not on that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm thinking, that's why I'm so big. And one of the first thing I said was, I want to communicate to my child. I want to make sure that they look at me as, obviously their dad, but they can be comfortable to explain what's going on in their lives. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Because I'm doing that, I'm doing the very same mm-hmm. from growing up to even where I am now. Like, and where we are at that point in time that's something yeah. i'm really big on it's like a game in it right now we're unlocking like coins because you mm. just you just said another trait that i don't think we explicitly said before which is communication yeah you said you're oh, going to talk before you're going to kind of just double back on what, what you, yeah i'm not even going to say nothing i just wanted to say we've just oh. did you do like a coin effect <laughs> <laughs> mario <laughs> coins yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We had support, we had listen, and now we got communication. Going. Uh, in terms of street smart, when I say street smart, again, I don't mean like, oh, you gotta go walk through the hood and like gangster lean or something. I mean like, like literally what you what you were saying, like in terms of maybe not paranoid, but definitely have your wits about you. Because again, your kid might go to uni, live on dorms, but well, you need to know not to hang out with the people that's taking drugs or drinking too much or doing mm. wild things in the uni parties. And that's what I mean in street smart. Like, like knowing what to do and, not to, and do. not to do or where to walk and where not to walk. And even if maybe you have to walk somewhere, do you know what I mean? And like run, I'm, I'm from South London. I have never, I can count on one hand how many times I've been to Hackney. Even when I was coming for the for the first pod, uh, Malik was like, oh yeah, you could come Hackney. Da, da, da. Yeah. And I was like, don't worry. Like, <laughs> I've, I've walked in dangerous places before like i'm from south london yeah and like <laughs> everywhere's dangerous like I'm, you know what i mean like brixton like I'm, i grew up in clapham but i used to hang around sometimes in brixton like i know how to like if i'm s- assessing an area like do you know what i mean like okay cool and even when i was coming i walked down some random roads like all i see is graffiti do you know what i mean anyone could have just jumped me or whatever right but i mean that's i mean when i say street smart i mean just be conscious that yo this is not sunshine and lollipops bruv even when Dorothy was on the the golden road or whatever it's called that was a mad road for her to be on you know all kinds of perils like <laughs> like and the road was gold <laughs> mm. like world is not sunshine and lollipops again because you wouldn't tell your you wouldn't let your daughter just kind of go out there and be like there's men that are mad predators you know to men and women mm-hmm. like you know what i mean people out there want to do harm for just they're just mad like just for no, no reason, reason. And I don't think if you again you'd be doing your kids any justice if you weren't like if like you, maybe you, you thought oh man I wish I could have told my brother like you know be careful when you're walking around if you see certain people maybe cross the road or maybe yeah. just slow down or maybe get on your phone or get on the phone to me mm. you know what I mean and just just being aware that okay there might be people and it could be older men women people driving cars all kinds of different things like I remember one time I was walking home from college and some guys just pulled up in a car like at the station and they were just asking everybody oh, come over like you got a card. <laughs> you know them people like oh you got you got a card like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to make a quick quick grand 
<laughs> no. But again, you know what I mean? Be, yeah. Knowing that someone's like, yeah, I want to make some money. You guys seem legit in a, in a Mercedes some and a tinted Mercedes. Stupid enough to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I mean, just being aware, like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, just just more being aware versus like, no, nah, I know the street codes and that. Like, yeah, just more being aware. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I I I agree. I mean, we kind of, we kind of looked at it, looked at it broadly, um, generally with our children. But mm. like my daughter's like, she's gonna be, one year, one year old in in a I don't know in about a week or so. Mm. So I'm just trying to think like, as a baby, because your daughter's similar age to my yeah. to my daughter. She's one now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just thinking, you know, in her toddler stage, how do you build resilience? Um, you're, you're a father mm. of a boy who's actually a few years older. Yeah. So it's just what, it's, th- it's those things, you know. Um, we will have those conversations around predatory men mm. and, and people that are going to take advantage of you and places to walk and mm. things to do and not do and stuff. But even as a child, because um, one of the things I love as, a, as an educator is 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 learning about children and if you think about the early years, literally from when a child is born up until like the age of like five, six, for instance, there are, there are so many things that you could do and say that affect their life outcomes, mm. you know, for the next 50, 60, 70 years. Mm. And some of that starts literally from what you do from when they're just a couple of months. And so I was thinking about resilience, for instance, and, 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 and like the growth mindset, like how would I develop that? in my daughter so like for instance one of the examples and one of the only few examples i could think of um is like for instance i'm even i'm even like scared thinking about it but like my daughter's learning to walk she's Mm. not walking yet and sometimes because we've got laminate flooring i'm like i'm just gonna let this girl go (laughs) i'm just gonna i'm just gonna let my hand go and then i can't do it i I physically can't Mm. do it because all i didn't envisage is like her going or going backwards Mm. and then like I wouldn't even be able to live with myself after that. But a part of me feels like it's like those little things she needs to like kind of like go through mm. for her to understand that actually, okay, next time if he might let go of my hand, so I need to figure out what mm. my feet are doing right now. Yeah. And I need to stand on my two feet. So it's just those little things in it. So that's what I was going to ask for you guys. Like what, what, what are the things that you think you could do to possibly help like the resilience or the development of your child in a particular area that you care about? Going off the same topic, yeah. So obviously, uh, my daughter's walking, and someone said to me, "Show off." <laughs> <laughs> Show off. No, no, seriously, because <laughs> no, what is? You just said something that was my big fear. Like, we've got the same laminate fall, flooring. I was scared. I was speaking. If she falls and hurts herself, that's my day done. Yeah, that's in, yeah. That's in, forget, forget this. Day. Forget I'm this upset. walking thing. You could just upset. get carried for the I'm rest up, of your like, life. When she like she's hurt herself one time, yeah, like she slipped, literally trying to crawl, and I was rattled. I rocked my whole day. Wrote off my whole day, meeting, cancelled, didn't, basically just, <laughs> I, I basically literally held him, was like, basically just lying down, like I was upset. Like you would have thought I hurt, my, hurt myself. So with that, then someone said to me something about, it's okay for your child to fall, just make sure they're there to pick, him up. pick them mm. up. Mm. And that encouragement to continue going is like, okay, cool, I get it now. Like, mm. So in that regards, I started encouraging her to, to continue surfing around um, the chairs and start taking the steps. And just making sure that she can see that I'm here. Mm. So if it goes wrong, I'm here. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then, regardless. And what, what you tend to find is they know what they're doing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Mm. What about you? I think for me personally and my son, you have to kind of know the kind of child you have in terms of like, my, since we're bragging. <laughs> <laughs> my son was walking at nine months crazy it was very early mm. some kids walking at 18 some one he was walking very early so in terms of like building resilience and stuff i i, I kind of reckon he's a lot stronger or a bit tougher like sometimes he'll bang his head i'm like don't cry <laughs> and he'd be like and i'd be like and he'd be like but he's crying inside <laughs> Sometimes I'll just leave him to cry and I'll be hugging him and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes I'll be like, you're all right, don't cry. Like the other day he fell over on his scooter and the the, the, the bar went into his rib and he couldn't breathe. Mm. <laughs> he couldn't breathe. Yeah, and done. I was holding him and I was rubbing him. I was like, breathe in. Out. And he was, But he was trying to cry and I was like, no, 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 breathe in, out. And I think you just kind of like, and even I was, I was shocked. I was like, bro, I'm not like, is it, is his rib is all right. I was like, is it bruised? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because um, he needs new handles. His handles on the scooter is just, 
she just we just mash it up. So, so, so it's the metal. <laughs> so it's the metal. Uh, that day I ordered the new. Ha- you know, we just been putting something off that you need to just order. Like, okay, that day I've ordered the new handles from Amazon. Now <laughs> she's becoming prime <laughs> for that thing. Digs into his chest again, um, and I think you just have to know your child. Like for instance, my he's my yeah. So he, he stopped wearing nappies at like two. Like he like he did not want to wear nappies anymore. So he's been going on the toilet since he was two. When he goes to bed, he wakes up in the night and goes to the toilet himself. He's three years old. He he's a, he, he he sleeps on a bunk bed, like he's got like the bottom bit mm-hmm. and then on the thing. I look, I realized like a couple of months ago, I, uh, I saw on the, like the label, the bunk bed is for six plus. I said, why is this guy free sleeping on a six plus bed? Why are you asking him and not yourself? <laughs> 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 you bought the bunk bed, not him. <laughs> it is. He's fallen off that bed in the night before. He was in the living room. All we heard was good dum good dum. And he, we found him on the floor and he was crying. He did not remember when he woke up. When I say both of our hearts were like, my God. Well, now we just put a pillow there where the door is because he usually, sometimes he would wake up and climb down the ladder and go to the toilet. Oh, okay. Sometimes he would just make noise and we'll just go and pick him up. I swear to you. <laughs> like, oh, that night I was checking him every five minutes mm-hmm. just to make, you know, oh, he's still breathing. Making sure is he all right? Yeah. Is his head hot? And I think in terms of the resilience, it's like, I get, I, I, I somehow knew he was going to be okay because this guy, is, he jumps around all the time mm. and he's always running around, bashing his head. I, I even did a video the other day. It was him just jumping off the couch. He put the cushion on the floor, jump, jump. And then he jumped <laughs> into my table. And I was like, oh, you're all right. <laughs> like, I can even show you the video after. I was like, oh, you're all right. And he was like, yeah, yeah I'm fine. I was like, yeah, this guy's mad. Yeah. But that was me mm. when I was young. I used to jump off like high buildings and just like roll on the floor like I was Black Widow or Captain mm. America or something. Or climb trees and fall out of the tree. Fairless. Never broke a b- bone, nothing. I'm like, this guy is mad, but that's me. Mm. But I was mad when he fell off the bed though. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny. What you're saying there is basically what my, what led to my dad kind of pushing harsh rules um, yeah. um, in place to mm. kind of prevent that. But you're allowing him to explore that. Yeah, that's, I mean, well, I didn't allow him to fall of the well, well, yeah, except, fall of the yeah, part. Not, not hurt part, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Good, I'm though, not too sense, cushioned when he was... I mean, I'm asking if he's okay. Like, I'm always yeah. looking out for him and that. I'm not just like, oh, yeah, go mash yourself up. No. But, again, just I think just knowing... Well, you guys have taught us so it's different. They're not going to be jumping around. Well, I don't know, Absolutely but they're not, not. going to be jumping around crazy <laughs> and right. running around. This guy ro- rides a scooter in the house and just smashes into... I'm just like, well, what's this guy doing? Like, he stopped breaking the house. So I think just for me, in terms of building resilience, just I'm also knowing how this because the children will show you how resilient they are i'm guessing isn't it like mm. you know what i mean again sometimes he'll be crying sometimes like okay don't cry man chill out not every day crying all the time like calm down like just strong 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 do you know what i mean but i guess yeah again you got you, they're gonna let you know how necessarily maybe strong they are i guess for me yeah yeah i mean before you've got a door so you're looking at me like this guy's just gonna just he's raising a rocky <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know what what's funny is my my daughter is like mad active like she's yeah. she's aggressive she she often like she often like falls or like kind of like will drop suddenly mm. and drop on her bottom for instance i've seen her like smack her head and stuff mm. or smack her foot on that and if you grab her quickly she's it's she's actually like more like pissed like angry <laughs> than she is like crying like it's like she wants to cry but it's out of like how did you guys allow me to hit my leg yeah. on this wall kind of thing but she won't start sobbing in it so she actually is already quite like a a strong character yeah. but she's massively active i'm hoping at the age of two three she's not trying to be jumping off mm-hmm. things but she's kind of she's kind of a very active girl anyway but one one of the things i was thinking about was um i think you said something i think you said your dad used uh basically like when situations like that happened for instance maybe one of you fell over or you hurt yourself that was like, all right, cool. So now nobody's jumping. Up yeah, no one's jumping. No, like, yeah, yeah. We, ain't, we ain't cultivating <laughs> Ray Mysterio <laughs> Jr. in this house. No, no. <laughs> WWE must stop. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So I was going to ask, what what do you think are things, traits, um, skills or messages that you have learned from your parents? That's what I'm saying. So I think it's more so what I think I should do. And that would again be like, for example, if you're not, if you're jumping from like you know crazy mm. hats, or whatever, rather than just going to say no jumping, the little just explain. Listen, don't <laughs> want to get hurt. <laughs> you wouldn't die, yeah. it. Like, 
And then trying to go to hospital. Yeah, yeah. Mum always said, "I ain't going to hospital." You know. So who is this? Your mum? Is this huh? how your mum used to? No, no. My mum, my mum will let it run. Like, okay, so yeah. she, yeah. My dad, you know, what? and the funny bit is, I see myself now behaving like my dad as well because mm. I'm so, you know, prevention is better than cure. Mm. Like, mm. I'm not on it. So my Joyce is always getting, my missus is always getting to me like, just relax. Oh, dad, like, let her, let her, like, mm. let her find her feet. I'm just like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want it wrong to happen. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I ain't got time to sit here thinking. Why did I allow this to take place? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or picking up the pieces yeah. after it's done, basically. But I'm trying to cool down a bit, like, you know, let her explore, let her be a bit of a, a child and, you know, make her make her right some wrongs. Yeah. So so what about what what about your parents then? Thinking about the things that they did. I think let's start with the positive things first, because the negative <laughs> is always, it's always could, easy. Could be here all day. It's always easy to go into. <laughs> yeah. But let's start off with the positive. Positive. What are, What are the things that your parents did, um, or the things that they said that you would like to adopt or apply to fatherhood for you and your children? For my dad, so my dad was around till I was ten, and then my mom just broke up, and then my mom got me remarried when she. Well, she got married. <laughs> she wasn't married to my dad. Oh. She got married when I was 15. Uh, so from zero to 10, a really good thing that I always say about my dad, he's a really good giver. He's a very good giver, like, but I think to his own detriment. And that's what I realised. So like, if my dad has 10 pounds, he would give you nine pounds and he would have one pound. But that's, mm. that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. he's always giving and I've, I feel like I got that from, I got, I got from him and my mum. And he's a really, really good giver, especially with money and like, he won't, he won't, like not give you anything even if he doesn't have anything he'll just try and give you something if he doesn't have anything um and f- like from my mum i think that's probably one of the only things i got really got from my dad and he's a smooth criminal as well <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got 12 kids so let's put that out there oh, so okay. <laughs> he's a he's a smooth guy <laughs> yeah, um, and he's hard working as well and he's got a skill so he works he's um he's like a, a builder and a handyman right he fix up anything fix up anyone's kitchen and all that kind of stuff right um and i think I used to go to work with him, in it from from like when I was young up to about ten. I used to go to work with him a lot, so he's always seen him working with his hands. I'm graphic designer. I mean, I don't work in the same respect as like mm-hmm. building wood and working with wood and that, but I work with my hands. Like, do you know what I mean? You know, I'm on a computer all day using my hands, right? Um, and I just got the sense of having a, a maybe a craft or like a, a something that you do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, he is great at that. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? That's what he he does. And I think I got that sense from him. Like, I've been a graphic designer for like 15 years and my dad's been doing that since he came, like, to this country from maybe about 20. Like, he came for 14, but I think he's been doing handyman stuff since he was about 20, 21 or whatever. Uh, so he's been doing that for a long. So I've seen my dad do the same thing for a long period of time. And obviously there's maybe, maybe you know, maybe sometimes you don't want to do that thing. But I think that's where I kind of got that trait from as well. And from my mum, again, very generous, very hard though, in the sense that she wasn't necessarily... Oh, I was going to segue into something else, but yeah, she's very hard. So it wasn't necessarily like too emotional. So I think that's, and I think that's a good thing for me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? In terms of being a boy, um, you don't want to go and go out there and kind of be too emotional. I feel like my dad's more emotional than my mom. I'm really kind of breaking it down here. Um, <laughs> my dad's kind of more emotional than my mom, but my mom really, really kind. Again, a giver, always looked after me, always loved me. Um, and I get that from her and I feel like one was like just like a, a, a good archetype for a woman and I didn't it took me long to realise that like at one point when I was 19 I was having tr- just troubles with just just just, rela- just relational with my mum and I got I felt like she didn't <laughs> my, is it broken? don't get distracted by me, <laughs> I felt like it's just moving. I felt like my mum actually didn't love me and then I realised that she loved me just not in the way that I accept that like, saw love yeah. like you know what I mean because everyone loves differently so in the sense that her love for me was cooking for me never going hungry never being cold <laughs> always having heat in having a house never being homeless went to a good school mom took me to a catholic school then shipped me off west to go to a, um, another catholic school in secondary school right she always provided for me, isn't it? But I wanted attention. But because, <laughs> again, back to the attention thing, I wanted maybe like attention. And because I, I didn't really get necessarily the, the, the kind of attention I wanted from her, I felt like she didn't love me. And then I kind of realized like, no, my mum is a really good 
person and a really good woman and a really good mum. And I didn't see it until I kind of got older and I kind of thought about it and I kind of just kind of reckoned with my own feelings. Mm. And I was like, no, my mum's good. And then I feel like I also picked a woman that's as good as my mum. And they get on great. Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas I think if I didn't kind of reckon with the fact that oh, my mum loves me, she just loves me in this way, the best way she knows how and what she's doing. And I have to accept that, you know, that maybe she's not going to love me in the way I think she should love me. Yeah, like yeah. what? What is that? Like, do you know what I mean? And she does love me, and I think that I have had that. You know, just that inner kind of um, battle with my mum. It taught me a lot about her, and what kind of like stuff I got from her, and the good traits I got from her, and just yeah, just just growing up with her. But from, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So in terms of my, I feel like my my mum was harder than my dad, right? My dad's quite emotional, um, and from being raised with my mum, I, like, I can't be rattled. I can't be rattled very because I've never seen my mum be rattled. Like a lot of things do not rattle her, and I think I and I, whereas I seen my dad get rattled a lot, like he's very calm and quiet and very soft spoken. Like you can hardly hear him, but if you rattle him, he is like Johnny Storm, bro. He's like the Human Torch, bro. Like he's like the next man. Whereas my mum, I hardly ever see her rattled, and that's, I'm the same way. You cannot rattle me. <laughs> I swear to you. Like I was even talking to my friends yesterday. I was like, I swear, if someone's like even if someone spits on me, I swear I walk away because you will not control me. You call me a nigga, you could punch me. The only, the only thing that would ever rattle me if someone talked about my wife or my son. Mm. That's the only thing that would, like, you could, you could say anything to me, you would never rattle me. Because I'm, I, I, I want to be in control of my own self. Like, you would not be able to say something to draw me out of myself. Like, you would not draw me out. Mm. I'll just walk away. You can call me a, a, a loser or a D-head or whatever you want. Like, oh, he's a, he didn't even do nothing. Yeah, I didn't. Because you would not rattle me. And I think I got that from my mum. I think that's, I mean, maybe it's a bit extreme. <laughs> like someone spits on you kind of thing, right? Yeah. I think it's a bit extreme, but I got that from my mum in terms of like she is very it's a level of it's a level of self self control. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and I, I mean I've seen my mum rattle, but for the most part like, I'm, I am like, hardly say right now. I think I think I I like that trait that I got from my mum. Mm. What about you, Sam? Um from my dad, it's quite easy. He's very determined, like and definitely installed discipline and um yeah. Just discipline and determination. Mm. Those two traits are something that he's always been big on, and you'd see if there's no quitting him. If he starts something, it has to it has to go the whole way. Mm. Whether it ends up good or bad, he has to see it through. And that's something with me now, where I'm extremely competitive anyway, as by nature, and I think that's come from him as well. So, mm. why it can be anything, and I'll somehow turn into a competition. Like, do you get know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's definitely come from him. Mm. And then with my mum, I guess that comes from the, the more emotional side of things where you know just empathy and understanding you know how to treat mm. other people and so forth like that so it's 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 quite a nice balance in all fairness yeah 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 um i think for me my mom's very similar to you uh, well to you and, <laughs> and to your mom in that um my mom very rarely gets rattled yeah um she's like so I think the positive thing I've seen with my mum is that ultimately, no matter what happens, there is no excuses for why she can't provide for her children. Mm. She set the example in the house. She set that tone. Um, something I associate quite heavy, heavily with what I think a man or what a father should do. My mum taught me that. Um, if my mum, you know, was on her last hundred pounds, somehow we are all going to still eat that week. Mm. And somehow bills are going to get paid and even if they're not getting paid she's not burdened us with that she will find a way she'll make it happen in it and i think ultimate ultimately my mom is extremely selfless because um my mom came here without i think maybe she was educated up until like secondary school after that she you know her, her family didn't pay for her to mm. go to school in nigeria so when she came here she still had her, her own ambitions to do things but um being an immigrant um, you know, not 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 being a first class citizen in that sense, uh, having to work unfortunately mm. to make things happen. She could she couldn't just go off and you know go and study like how she wanted to, or whatever. You know, life life mm. kind of took place, and um, I've seen my mum over the years attempt different jobs. She's worked in in the healthcare sector for many years, but I've I've seen her go for different types of jobs. Um, and she's always been ambitious to go for them. Mm. And the only reason why my mum may not go for it completely or like we, wh why she might stop or she might not take on something is if she thought it was going to impact the family. Mm. So she always put us first, even when it meant that she was literally not pursuing her dreams anymore. And I think that selflessness from my mum 
um, and just her being accountable and responsible um, in the way that a mother and a father should be, I think. Mm. She did that job very well. Um, that's one thing that I would definitely try and apply to, to my mm. family. Um, and one of the things that I think I really appreciate my mum for, which is which is interesting with my mum because my mum was is not and wasn't an affectionate woman. Mm. So I, I haven't got many memories or experiences mm, of right. my mum yeah. saying I, I love, love you, you. <laughs> yeah. or cuddling you yeah, whatever. Right. My, my dad actually funny enough was the was the more affectionate one. Mm. Um and I had I up until recently anyway I struggled to see many positives with the relationship that I had with my dad and and his role in the house. Um but one thing I can say with him is that he was extremely affectionate. Actually, mm, he was aff- he was more affectionate than my mum and he was highly emotional, which was good and bad. So mm. when things weren't great, like you said, it's a yeah. storm. Mm. Um, but at the same time, he's the one that would say openly, like, I love you. Mm. You know, you guys are making me proud. You know, he's an, emo- he's mm. an emotional mm-hmm. person, which can go good mm. and bad. Mm. But my mum, <laughs> mum's just like a wall. Like, you know, and the funny thing is, and there's no question in my mind that my mum does love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mum yeah. loves us. Yeah, of course. Death. Yeah. But the way she displays it. Yeah. Same exact same. Not movie. very and so mm. one of the things I won't do is 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 represent love in the way that my mum did mm. in its entirety. Like I would take the good things in the way that she was selfless, food's on the table regardless, every single mm. night. She would do a twelve hour shift, she'd come home, she's still cooking, even though she told us to put the, the meat out. Take the chicken out. An hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't out. Man's putting the hot water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the car pull up and I'm like, oh crap. You guys put the chicken out. No one did it. So, you know, we get lambasted that evening and mum's going to cook same way, do what she needs to do. Um, but I think where she wasn't very affectionate, she's trying to now repair that now. Mm. And she's trying to like make amends with me and my siblings. Well, not make amends. She didn't do nothing wrong. It's just mm. for whatever it's reason, different. it's just how she is and how she was raised. You know, she's she's not emotionally there like that. Mm. Um, but so I think that's one of the positives I'll take from my mum, but also one of the things that I think I wouldn't take from my mum that affected me. So, that, yeah. Yeah. That you know what? Just to add to it as well, there's a lot of things that, in fairness, that my parents have done, that meant that I had a good understanding, or I've seen it. So I've seen them, for example, um, quali- um get degrees and go, go, go into um different careers and so forth, buying houses and mm. so forth. So, and that's something I've realized later on that it's actually a privilege to have seen that because it meant that I I knew it was possible. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. If you don't see something from from first hand experiences, something sounds a bit more distant. Mm. And having seen those things meant that it was almost a I have to do that. It's not even a um it's not it's an achievement by all means, but it's not the most worldly thing I've achieved. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. my parents did that, so it's a standard that? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's good. I wanna come back to that. The standard. But I wanna <laughs> go for what you said. Um uh in terms of like like showing love and stuff like that. now I'm like overly lovey no I don't say overly I'm, I'm probably it's probably general but maybe to me it's, it feels like overly I always kiss my son on the lips like I kiss him like five times a day like I'm always hugging him like I just want to hold him even sometimes when I'm when I'm taking him to the toilet in the night I just be holding him like I just be like oh because you know it was all wriggly during the day so you can't really hold him I just be holding him looking at him like what's my son like oh yeah. my god like mm. I feel like I'm so emotional <laughs> towards him and my mom was never like that again I think she told me like I love you like on my birthday like one a year once a year mm. never really giving the hugs and all kisses and all that but now with my son I'm like just over, proper overly like just happy like oh no he's sleeping on me do you know what I mean and I feel like maybe because there was such a deficit <laughs> maybe I don't know if it's again I don't know if it's overly maybe it's just normal I, I don't know I because I have, I feel like maybe I didn't get a lot of that from my mum so now I'm just doing it with my son and maybe, I just I just like it maybe I think I'm it's compensa- over emotional. maybe I'm compensating yeah or like yeah, but yeah, do maybe. you think that they would have been like exactly how the over, overly emotional yeah. and shown that level of affection if they didn't have the same level of struggles at the time. Do I think they... <laughs> I think that's a good question. I think everything... Everyone had to pause there, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think yeah. everything's relative, like, for me. Yeah. Like, one of the, well, I'm sure if someone did a survey in the word that I used the most, like, yeah, context. Like, but, but this is... But this, but this I, is I, don't, I, don't, I don't excuse it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't excuse it because I'm sure... I don't know. I can't see everything. Mm. Only God can. But I believe that there are families... Or there is a family out there who have even less than what me and my family had. Mm. Um, not taking away our actual experiences, but there are 
you can always compare your privilege to someone else and mm. what you have. And there is, there's a family out there that have very little, you know, mm. and I'm sure they still... They expressed. Still, they, sh- they, sh- they still display the traits that we think mm. a good parent should have, irrespective of their financial. Because when it comes down to it, when we say their struggles and, mm. and the things they went through, more often than not, we're relating it to the financial struggle. Not just um, that though. There's sometimes you know, yeah, other stuff like yeah, the, yeah the racial but stuff. But gum, <laughs> who's gonna say <laughs> something? He's gonna say it's not just that. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, not just that. You got to think about. I never. I'll, I'll, it took me a really long time to understand why I wasn't allowed to open the door. When <laughs> 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 Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, one day, it really, set, I thought, oh yeah, that's a real issue. Isn't it? That would have yeah. been that would have been peak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like hard lessons. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I think to myself, son. Um, now they had so much going on. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. That we don't even consider. Mm -hmm. But I'm always devil's advocate. But even within that, because, you know, bailiffs, for Mm -hmm. example, is like an example of why you don't open the door. Mm -hmm. uh, And you learn the first time. It's like, okay, cool. I'm not going to open the door next time, but it's too late. But you, you, you mentioned the trait before, which is communication. Yeah. If you communicated to me that if I open this door, bailiffs will come and take everything and then Mm. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> that would make more sense than just be like, don't open the door, don't yeah. do this, don't, don't do that. Phone, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I think, uh, but but, this, but I think it's it's very uh, uh, subjective to the person that your parents are and and you are in, in the sense that something could happen. We know things happen to two things happen to the uh, two. The same thing can happen to two different people, and we get two different reactions, right? Like, so for instance, like. Again, I know my mom. I know my mom's life. Like she came up, she came here from Ghana when she was about fourteen. There were there's she has three, she has two, there's three of them. There's three three sisters. There was a fourth one, and she fell down the stairs and died. My, my mom's had loads of friends that have died. My mom's parents kicked her out <laughs> when she was like sixteen. So my mom's come up hard. So I can understand if she's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But a- again, like you said, I, f- I feel like there's a choice there. It's like a- again, like I've had. Things happened to me like last time we spoke about my sister dying. I could have, I did go left. I could, I could have stayed left, and I could be super. That could have made me super hard, but it, it's made me so much more appreciative of my son. But it couldn't have made me go the other way. Like I could have had a son and just been like, well, you know, what's, I've just lost my mind, right? And I, I felt like, again, maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm making it too simple in terms of like, obviously, there's a choice. I don't mm. want to like um, necessarily but yeah, diminish. Yeah, it's not as simple as yeah, that. Yeah. I don't want to necessarily diminish the experiences of people and how they handled or how they could have handled their experiences, right? Because again, I, my mom still loved me, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Even though she was hard because she kind of came up hard, right? Um, but some, yeah, not to disrespect it, but sometimes there is a, a choice. I feel like I chose anyway to like, you know, create that bond with my son. And I, it kind of segue into something else I wanted to say as well. Create that bond with my son and just kind of love him extra because of the way I came up and the stuff maybe that I feel like I've lost you know, and I could have gone left and I'm like no I want to go all the way right mm. you know what I mean and again not everyone necessarily even has that choice even in the first place or can even come to that conclusion in in the first place because just maybe who they are where they've come from and the stuff they've also experienced you know what I mean so again I don't want to say oh you can just choose no that's not what I'm really saying but in the sense that I know for me personally I I've been to dark places and I've had stuff happen to me and I I, 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 I know that I've decided to choose to kind of try to be somebody and be maybe this person, do you know what I mean? And and just kind of open myself up to like loving my, overly loving my son and kissing him all the time and just being that kind of essential person to him, right? do you know what I mean? But yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, uh, it's yeah. kind of a hard thing to navigate. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I didn't really want to... <laughs> I know what you mean. To, yeah. I know what you mean by not wanting to say everyone's got a choice. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not that simple. Not as as yeah, nuances, that. Yeah, so just, yeah. And the reason why you show your love, your son, so much affection may not necessarily be because your mum was hard on you. Yeah, it, exactly. exactly. Your mom personality. Yeah. It's your, it's your lens. It's the way it's you just, yeah, yeah, like, process it's, life. Yeah, it's multi layered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and so that, much, so many yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, and even maybe the influence of your wife. Yeah could play a part in the way that you raise your child mm. um and then the people around you so yeah it is quite it is quite multi-layered i mean we've been going for for about an hour now um but there was one thing in particular that i i wanted to kind of finish off on or, or at least just kind of cover so um 
So we were speaking earlier about, you know, Project Mbappe. <laughs> and yeah. and for those of you who don't know who Mbappe is, so he is probably, you know, I'd say one of one of two or three, um, one or two or three of the, the best young talents in the world, as in like a child, not a child anymore, but a, a footballer who we predict or many predict will probably be a Ballon d'Or winner uh, very, very soon. He's won the World Cup. He's won two French league titles uh, with, um, no, he's won he's won French league titles with two different clubs. First one he won at eighteen. He scored a ridiculous amount of goals. You know the the, the kid is literally like a superstar, but also a a, a whiz. Um, uh, and basically, we was talking about his story, and his story comes from his father and 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 people in his family putting in a lot of work from when he was a very young boy to ensuring that this happened and so from a very young age they were um you know doing uh drills with him he was kicking balls from as early as like one two um training all the time and if you look at the archives of of, um, of Mbappe's life you see pictures of him with Thierry Henry all of these like famous stars and so one of the one of the things that um Goodman Malik was saying was like they pretty much cultivated this environment where he was going to blossom mm. but they also put mad work into it and i guess the question that i had to ask is is that a bad thing what they done what his family had done considering all the success that he has mm. um but the counter argument to that is if at any point within that he wanted to be an artist let's say mm. and draw pictures <laughs> Did his family or his parents <laughs> well, <laughs> just, you know, drill just, him, <laughs> just drill it out of him that like you are going to be this regardless? Yeah. And the reason why I ask the question is because we make jokes all the time, or, or I make jokes. So, for instance, I saw a video on TikTok the other day where this guy, it was a sick TikTok, he showed his son from when he was like one, and I think he's like three now, and he literally showed you every little bit of practice that his son did to yeah, the point where he was like free and he's doing overhead kicks yeah. and diving headers. It looked so sick. <laughs> yeah. And they had this room in their house where like clearly it was built and designed for this <laughs> yeah. child project Mbappe. Yeah. Literally, like. <laughs> yeah. And I, I reposted it and put, you know, project Mbappe, like in brackets, he, she, you know, like making a joke about my daughter, like, you know, yeah. could, it could be project Mbappe for my daughter. And then it, it really kind of made me think that actually, although we make jokes about it, I'm sure that kind of like Joe Jackson mm. treatment could potentially be detrimental in some mm. way. Michael Jackson was a superstar. Uh, but he had his demons. Yeah, one of the greatest, ent probably the greatest entertainer that we'll ever see. Um, but the guy had his demons, like you said. Yeah. And that was a traumatic experience. So where do you guys sit on the fence before we break up around Project Mbappe? So you know what's funny, or yeah? Project Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I'm really big on not pushing my child into anything they don't like mm. into any kind of sport career whatever i want i want to understand what she wants to do or my children to do and then help them along that way mm. so project mbappe is sick like it is very successful obviously we've seen the talent and we've seen what he's doing achieving however i, I, I i'm scared that they can turn around and say one day this isn't me. This isn't what I want to do. And that, for me, would be like the ultimate fail. Mm. So, for me, it's I, I want to almost be wild like everybody else. Like, oh, wow, this is what this is what she's gone up to, gone, grown up to achieve. And mm. be like, yeah, that's what she does. Mm. And then talk about whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, can you imagine now? Can you, can you imagine um, some, you've got, you've got friends that do creative, creative, this is creative, yeah? Creative um, fields and industries um, and your parents back then would have said, you are bluffing. Mm. <laughs> if it isn't accounting, <laughs> lawyer, lawyer, doctor, yeah. you are having an absolute laugh because that's what they knew was success, was yeah. um, successful careers. Mm. Outside of those fields, it's non-existent. Mm. So for me, I don't want to like, pigeonhole box because at the end of the day, we don't know what might change the world in, in you know the future. So I don't want to limit that. I, I want to literally say, wow, this is what she's on. And then I, I'm going to be gassed because I want because I'm so keen to understand, and be happy with what she does. Mm. I'll be like to you, man. Yeah, my my daughter does this, and I'm explaining from mm. A to Z what it is, mm. even though what, in whatever you know capacity that is, and being happy at, with that. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's sick. Don't get me wrong, Project Mbappe and all that stuff. But that's the dad's dream. It's not the child's dream. 
with with Mbappe, was he like talented in football? And and then they just yes go. We don't know. We don't know. It was just an experiment. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But he was born and put a ball in his his feet and said, (laughs) "This is you." (laughs) Personally, where I'm at with that, like for instance, like my son does. I want my son to be a coder, but not if he does not want to be. So right now we put him in a coding class, and not necessarily coding. It's like just understanding the fundamental principles of coding. Oh, you put you do this and you do that, and at the end, um, instructions. Algorithms. Is that what that is? Is that is that the same? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can you can make algorithm, but just coding generally, like okay. apps and computers and whatever kind of coding he wants to kind of do. Because I'm like, I'm thinking like, wow, this coding stuff is the future, mm-hmm. man. You can make technology. This is coded. This is coded. Ah, everything's coded. Yeah. This is your coding dream. Is, no, 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 not my dream. I, but this, I, this if is, I could pick a career yeah. for him yeah. that I would want him to to do, I'd want him to do coding. Mm-hmm. So we're putting him in coding now. If he's if he's not good at it, or if he doesn't want to do it, he also dumb just does gymnastics. But this, yeah, I'm okay. ju- I'm just saying we put him in different stuff as as a child. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? If he doesn't want to do it. Um, I, like my mom never forced me to do anything. Yeah, my mom like I wanted to be an architect, and then I was doing a uh, graphic design, and she saw me. She was like, "No, you really got this graphic design stuff, you know? I think you should do that." And I'm 15 years now, graphic designer. My mom never forced me to do anything mm. when she was raising me at all. Do you know what I mean? But if, she, if I was doing, if I was good at something, she would help me with that. And that's how that's how I'm the same I'm going to be because her parents yeah. were really hard, and her parents wanted her to be this, 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 and that's why they kicked her out because she didn't want to do it. If you don't, you can't be in, under this roof, isn't it? So I I don't think I'm I'm gonna again I would like him to have, be coding but that's just I would like yeah, because yeah, if I could pick sense. something that I could see that is very uh, valuable in the future as beyond being an accountant etc cetera, etc cetera, I think it would be something like coding right because everything's in, in computers now and all that if he doesn't want to do it and he wants to do something he's good he's better at something else or he's good at something else I'm one hundred percent there if he wants to be a writer homeboy that's right yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean that's that's where I am I'm so in the sense that I I feel like I have to set a standard and give him a direction like hey okay, oh, try this you know what i mean do this and keep going with that and, and unless you don't want to if you don't want to well what do you like you have yeah. to have something that you like because that's, i'm gonna set the standard and set set you off and and help push you and, and throw you out there right and and support you whatever you want to do but i think in the beginning i'm not just gonna let you live life yeah because yeah. for me for for me it's like i don't really want him to be necessarily a lazy child. Oh, he's doing anything. And then he's not going to get to 10 and be like, now you have to do this. He's going to be too lazy. You don't, don't want to do anything because he's never done anything. So I feel like I kind of have to keep him busy. Mm-hmm. Again, again, as a as an adult, as a parent, I'm making up my own, yeah. what I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But it's, it, I don't know. It's just the best I can do. And I feel like I, I just want to keep him busy with different activities until we can kind of figure out maybe what he's proficient really nice. in mm, might be mm. good at talking and speaking and presenting isn't it mm-hmm. so i want to get him into um acting because my auntie is the um the children's director for lion king so as soon as he's six years old he's mm-hmm. going to her theater classes mate because yeah. he's kind of funny already he talks a lot already so I'm like, okay oh well, he's good my wife's my, my, my always saying oh yeah you should do acting 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 I'm like, yeah cool okay well when there's Try when that. he's of age of four or five or whatever the, the age he can do theater classes we'll put him in that so i'm at the because fi- that's what i did when i was about from about 13 to about 16 Marnie sent me to uh summer school in, in goldsmith college university um and we just did loads of stuff i did drumming music theater uh theater lights music graphic design that's why i learned how to be a graphic designer all these kind of different things web design so i had loads of stuff that i dipped in and i and then that's where i found you on dinner one how, how old were you one uh so I found graphic design when i was about 15 um and i started probably doing it when i was about 16 so about mm. 15 to 16 that's when i kind of I never heard of it before. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I just wanted to be an architect because I was copying my big cousin because he wanted to be an architect. Um, he's not an architect now, though. He does music. Um, but yeah, I, f- I feel like that's the kind of the same thing I want to do for my son. Give him loads of stuff. I like okay, that. Which one do you want to do? Do you know what I mean? Versus, again, I would like him to do coding because I think I think that is going to be successful. But if he doesn't want to do that, I'm not going to force it. Mm. No, I like about that, yeah. I like the idea of um, we're going to throw you into a lot of different things. Yeah. And then if we see that you enjoy something mm. then we can hone in it mm. that, that makes a lot of sense to me mm. because then what you've done is given your child the option mm. and said you pick what you like and if you think you want to go forward with this then we'll mm-hmm. support you but no matter what you're going to do you're going to get the fundamentals mm-hmm. and that and that requires discipline and mm-hmm. you know determination and just then having those fundamentals to not be lazy like you like mm-hmm. you pointed out mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. that that's applicable regardless of mm, what um, field exactly. you're going to and i think for me especially it's that you pick something yeah not it doesn't matter what you pick but you have to pick something that will be valuable to you your family and to the world that i think that's at the core of what i'm actually saying like pick 
So you want to dance? Or your boy, homeboy, you better dance. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you want to print T-shirts? Well, you better get print. Like, do you know what I mean? If just pick something. Like, for instance, I always like, you know, people always say, that, imagine if I did this from 10. If I knew about, because I was drawing and doing like drawing comics and made my own comics and all this kind of stuff. If I knew maybe like graphic design, maybe, like maybe even two years earlier or whatever, like, but right now, like, if he wants to be a graphic designer or whatever, I could give him, he could be a graphic designer from 10. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. and if you could just get what, what maybe what your kid is earlier as early as possible that's yeah. that's that's yeah. that's the real game get them into what they want to do as early as possible what they want to do right as early as possible and get them running with that then yeah Sweet. and even yeah. if they change their mind at 15 right even if he wants to yeah. do something at 10 and they change their mind at 15 or 20 because obviously life is going to change as you grow isn't it then again we will start running with that one <laughs> do you know what i mean at the same uh, point they've been to supply so it's yeah sweet yeah, yeah I, d- I, d- I don't i don't um I don't disagree, um, but I don't completely agree. And it's only about a small percentage. And it's the part about keeping them busy mm. so that they don't become lazy. Um, I feel like that there's a fine line that we have to tread because I feel like um, the expectations that I'll have of a five-year-old at the end of the day, mm. that laziness in itself is kind of like... I meant when he's more older, but... Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So, you, yeah. So, you want him to kind of like yeah. just... Oh, he plays be, a lot. ...be engaged yeah, yeah, in yeah. stuff yeah. now, but in the future, know that you've had to work somewhere. Because yeah. yeah. yeah, there's yeah, lessons yeah. in everything that you can yeah, do. Yeah. Anyway. I didn't mean like this young. I meant like more, more so like, when he's older, like 10 and stuff like that. Just, yeah, I let him play, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and that's all yeah. I was going to say, really, because ultimately, like, um, you know, children yeah. and there's research that backs it up that play is is, is is the best thing you know and there's yeah. some countries you look at a lot of the scandinavian countries for instance the reason why education is um so powerful in those in those nations is because uh there's a real emphasis on children learning through play yeah. so i think their children don't even start school until the age seven of about six or seven yeah. so up until that point they're That's just learning cool. through play and you and and obviously it's structured and there's a framework around it but trying to drum into children things that they do not necessarily care about mm. is is potentially quite dangerous mm. and so that's why i liked what you said in that like your child's going to engage in all these different activities mm. and then what you said was that but when, whilst they're doing that i'm going to spot what is they're paying attention what yeah, is key like, what do they like you know yeah. and for some children that's like clear as day mm. as in you can tell from two you're obsessed with cars mm. or you're obsessed with this mm. you know i've got students in my class that in my head i have a challenging i have a real challenge with myself like a conversation where i've got to be like why am i still teaching mm. when he doesn't even care about this 10, 1066 history in britain <laughs> <laughs> and this child only cares about construction yeah. Fire of London, you know. And then someone else, an, a- an academic of some sort, so you know, every child needs to learn their core subjects, need to learn their English. Do yeah. Yes, they do, but they're not going to die if mm. they put o- put aside one or two of those subjects or topics that we're covering, mm. and we personalize Focus. their education of yeah. some sort. Because I can guarantee you, what's not happening is at home; those same things aren't being cultivated. Mm. So when you got a child whose skills and talents aren't being cultivated at school and then at home, not saying that all parents are like this, but even if you're a little bit slack on what your child cares about, time will go on and you allow the school system to dictate what your child can Mm -hmm. and can't do. And so we're trained and literally, I was going to say we're designed, but we're trained and designed to think anyway that like your your route to success is going through GCSEs, Mm. Mm. A-levels, university, Mm. degree, Mm. and then that's you're going to now be set for life. And that's not the case because Mm. the majority of people are working in jobs where actually they're not fulfilled. Um, It's not paying the bills that they thought it might pay. There's levels to it. Mm. And more often than not, people that are successful in life are the ones who are doing genuinely what What they they enjoy enjoy doing in it. And, and, And so I think with that being said, I'm going to finish off on the fact that, uh, you know, our jobs as parents, uh, particularly as fathers, is is very key. It's very important. I've certainly learned today a lot of things from someone like Brian, who's quite experienced, mm. and obviously someone like you, Simon, who, Samson, who has a, a, a daughter that's of similar age. Yeah. And you've said many things there that I think I'm going to implement. You sound experienced, man. He's only three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're two, year, two years more experience. Hey, those two years, man. <laughs> it makes a difference. Twos. I heard terrible twos is mad. Yes. <laughs> Trust me, it is. Um, Freeze up. Even it's worse. Another conversation. Even worse, yeah. <laughs> but um, but on that note, what I want to do is I want to celebrate all the fathers out there, all the good men who are looking after their children, um, doing so quietly, doing so 
uh, with grace, um, teaching their children to be positive role models uh, for society. So we want to appreciate you and say thank you. Um, and also what we want to do is we want to bless every good man out there with a uh, a discount. So if you type in uh, GPOD1 on our website, on our Goodman Factory website, you can get, get yourself any uh, products and get yourself a 10%, 10% discount on any of our Goodman Factory products. So we're going to leave it there. I want to say once again, thank you, Samson. No thank you, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, you guys have dropped some gems today. Thank you, Boardman Malik over there in the background. Uh, <laughs> And the good man community. <laughs> if you see the eyes he's giving me, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> guys, we're out. Peace.